Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and on this tutorial we will see how to create a 3D version of Molan. <laughs> so Molan is a really fun um, animated series. We will see how to make this character on the spline. So this will be actually a time lapse. So the first thing is to always use a reference image. So I'm putting this reference image right on the front and then I build like a cube and then I activated the subdivision mode on a spline. Now I start adding like more subdivisions and using the polygons and the points and the edges. So I can basically give more like shape to this initial cube, right? Now I apply the subdivision. I basically increase the base subdivision and now I just keep adding more details, right? So I'm working on the back of Molan right now, which you cannot see from this picture, obviously. But I'm just trying to infer how this shape will be in the 3D space. Now here, I'm just keeping adjusting the shape. And now I change the background here so we can get more closer to the actual image. You can see here, I'm, I'm just trying to get this really smooth, but also kind of like... Um, blocky um it's like a smooth block that molan is so i'm just trying to adjust this very simple shape here in order to get the structure that molan has on his body so it's almost like a beam but it's like a really kind of like round beam so it takes a little time to just adjust the shape in a way that it looks a lot like the character so now i'm working on the on the little ear so I'm just trying to, I, I basically just started with a Q and then extruded it. And now I'm just adjusting and adding some division and maybe um, changing the scale a little to match what we saw in the illustration there. So there's a little of rotation. So I'm just adjusting the position and orientation of it. So I use the same technique for the, for the hams. You can see it's just a Q that I extruded it. And now and just um, scaling it down and position it in a way that it looks a lot like the composition. Um, I duplicated the hams to create the, the feet. So because basically it's just the same shape, just a little bigger um, on the bottom part of the body of Mola in this case. Um, and I added this little sphere on the back, which is like the tail. Um, now I'm working on the eyes and the eyes are just perfect spheres that they're just separated a little bit and um, scale it and, and using like a color black here for the eyes. Now I'm using a uh, torus to create the little nose. Um, so I duplicate the torus and I put it on the other side. And then I just creating a cylinder here with some round corners so we can complete the shape in here. So obviously this is a very simple shape which make it easier to build on a spline because you can just use like parametric shapes like the torus and the cylinder. Yeah, so final adjustments here to make it look like more in the in the illustration. Maybe it should be, um, yeah. So now I'm working on the little chicken. <laughs> so you can uh, see here the second character is a little more um, smaller. So I'm just trying to find this kind of like this roundness on the shape uh, to make it look um, very similar, right? So it's the same the body is very round um, it's actually a little less complex than molan and now here in the tail i'm just using the extrusion tool so i'm extruding these two polygons and then i'm moving and scaling the polygons to match the shape of the tail in the back side so you can select the you can select the vertices and then you can adjust the shapes easily here you can see that I duplicated one of the ears from Molan and now I'm using that as the base shape for how the um, little piece of hair of the beard, you know, in the, in the, in the head. So I'm just moving the, the part and moving the, the vertices here until we get something that is very close to what the character is. Yeah, just a little refinement until we get something that is very close to it. So now I'm creating the eyes. So then again, just perfect spheres that they need to be kind of like move it a little and scale it until we find like the final balance for it. And just adjusting a little bit on the hair. Yeah. So now that is very close to the actual character. Um, 
it's time to start working on the on the kind of like the mouth. So you can see that the mouth is actually <laughs> I'm just using the hair as the base mesh and then just duplicate it, change the scale, change the orientation, and now I can easily just replicate the mouth this way. So it was quite easy. Um, it's just a matter of adjusting the shapes until you get something that, that works. Now here I'm just creating a little bit of materials so we can start like separating the shapes and making it easier to understand. Um, I will do the same for, for the Molan and all the characters later. So here's for the body um, now I duplicated the <laughs> Molan um, legs slash feet so yeah you can see there just using the same orange and kind of like starting like adding color. So now I'm doing the same with Molan, I'm just creating the materia. It's gonna be a base plat, and then I use like overlay on the lighting so it can look a little more natural. And then apply the same for, for all the other objects that are supposed to be in the same color for Molan. So yeah, again, just adjusting a little bit the shape so it looks good. Um, I noticed that the eyes are not actually black, so I'm using like a dark um, color there. Right, so, then again the same with the um, second character here. But then again, so it's just a matter of adjusting materials until we get um, something similar. When you use like uh, the overlay on the lighting, it makes things look a lot more um, kind of like saturated. So I really like to use that technique. Here I'm just adjusting the the wind. So in essence, it's just the same as the, the hair. It's just that I stretch it out a little and then I choose uh, orientate in vertical so it looks like it's some sort of hand slash wind. So then again, uh, this is something that you can do a lot when you're building a character in 3D. You can reuse the shapes, especially on a character like this, which is very simple. You can just build one single shape and then you start reusing this and just changing the scale and adjusting a little the, the polygons or the vertices. Now I'm just, I group everything and into an empty object and now I'm just positioning everything so it makes sense. I realized that the, the eyes were not in, initially in the same group so I put the eyes in there. Now that everything is in, inside a group, I can rotate everything um, so it's easier for composition. Uh, sometimes you realize that when you are putting something in the final composition that the shape is not actually looking the way you want to. So then you just need to start like adding like more adjustments and trying to figure out how to replicate um, the 3D version of an initial like 2D illustration. Then, uh, you know, we need to add like more colors. So here I just, I realized that I was missing like the cheek color. and <laughs> That's like a very uh, important like distinction. So basically I'm just using like a depth layer, which is a 3D gradient. So the 3D gradient is like a really big sphere. Um, and I'm using the radial version, which is like a sphere. So then I move it right close there to the eye. And I use like a um, very kind of like um, contrasted gradient. So it's easier to apply these. So one of the colors in the gradient is transparent and that's why you only see the kind of like red pink color. So I'm doing the same thing for for the beard. So I'm just um, replicating the material, uh, sorry, the layer and then trying to find out a way in which it looks um, like it's round. This is actually the beauty of working with procedural um, material layers because usually you need to paint these, um, but the painting process is really hard. But when you're working with procedural layers, uh, you just need to find a way of um, kind of like matching the type of effect that you're looking for. So here I'm just uh, trying to find a way in which it looks uh, really round and then moving a, li a little until I can replicate um, a, a, a good circle for the eyes. Um, for, for this like cheap effect. Uh, so then I finally got it uh, what I wanted and yeah just uh, just try it there. Once I have it done I just uh, duplicate it and I put it on the other side and yeah that was that was all that it was required for for achieving this. Then it's just a matter of changing the order a little bit so it looks like more uh, mixed with the, the colors behind. And yeah, there you have it. So now they both look good. So now I, I noticed that um, I need to actually kind of like create um, like more um, details here. So I change the orientation. Yeah, just a little bit of scaling. 
So at this point, I no longer need the reference image because uh, now I can start working just for we, what I have. So I'm building here the floor. And the floor is gonna be so I can project some shadows there. Um, but then I realized that I wanted, I didn't want to use, to use um, like an actual um, projected shadow. So, uh, but in the meantime, I just kind of like working on the colors, trying to make it a little bit more like a pinkish um, type of color. It's probably in different kind of like lighting conditions. So this process, um, it's just a matter of like keep trying stuff. Um, at this point, I realized, okay, you know, I don't want to have like more like um, actual projected shadows. So I start like working on this kind of like more like contact shadows using a, a gradient layer on the floor, uh, which is just like a depth layer, basically like a drill. And now I'm using the same for, for the body, right? So this is just um, a, a depth uh, layer that I just changing for the body. And then I just um, started like playing around. If you use like a smooth blending on the depth layer, um, things look a lot more like uh, natural because um, you cannot see the borders of the gradient. And then I just adding a little more details um, on the feet when it's contact in contact with the floor. And now I'm adding more like contact shadows on the body itself because you know if you have like an a, something that you're holding that should be casting shadows in your body. But because this is like a bright yellow, it should also be casting like something like a, the color. It's a mix, a mix between darkness and also like yellow. So that's why I make it look like that. This effect is commonly uh, uh, called um, global illumination. You can see I did it also in the hand of Molan right there. So then again, just refining, uh, making sure that everything is kind of like um, looking good. Um, adjusting the materials a little and adding a little bit more gradient um, here in the bird so it has like more direction in the light and also more contact shadow there. You can see in the in the case of the bird because it's yellow the shadows are supposed to be more like a reddish type of color because it look, that looks more, more natural. So then again just refining a little bit more. Here I'm just changing the background. Um, I just I realized that I just wanted like more like pinky background. So now accordingly I'm changing um, the color of uh, Mola. Um, so eventually I realized that I actually prefer like to not have kind of like lighting at all. Later on I will be just maybe using just like a gradient, but for now I'm just playing around with different like contact shadows, finding like a good balance. So this is very similar when you're working in 2D and you just want to have like something that looks really polished. You just try it and try ideas until you can find out the, the final composition. You know, like the size of the fee, like how long it should be. So right, can, right now you can see here I'm almost ready. Everything is looking pretty much close to the initial intention. So it's a lot more wide. There is only uh, a gradient that is generating basically the the the, the shadows and you know making you feel like you the Molan character has volume. So now um, I realized that uh, maybe a little details like this could add like more contrast, um, but it needs to be very very subtle, right? So you don't always need this kind of effects, and you can use like different blending modes like overlay to make it more more subtle. The same thing happened here. I'm just you know, playing around a little with the color of the bird so it looks um, very kind of like a coherent. So yeah, um, final adjustments, making sure that we have something that has a good contrast. So I realized in the, in the, the back side of Molan was kind of flat. So I started adding a little bit more detail so it feel like less flat. Um, so again, a depth layer, which is a 3D gradient. And then a little bit more color and then I'm adding just a little bit more darkness there so it feels like less less flat. And that's about it. I hope you like this narration. This is the first time I do something like this. This was a project that we did a couple of weeks ago and I recorded the entire uh, process. So I felt like it might be useful to see how you can use a spline in a, you know, in, in a full process. The entire time lapse actually took like one hour and this video is like 15 minutes. So you can actually do something like this very easily. Uh, most of the time it's a span in just like, you know, figuring out the right colors, the right balance. And the modeling itself for this scene was actually quite simple. So bye bye, see you in the next tutorial.